Hello, good to see you. Pastor Sam with a devotion for February 20th. We are talking today about the resurrection, which if you've watched me for any length of time, you know, is, is my favorite topic in like all of Christianity, the resurrection. Oh, it's a really good thing. Anyway, I'm doing a bit of devotion leaders prerogative. Anyway, we we're supposed to cover Job 15 today. By the way, the readings are broken up, but I am cherry picking Job 14 for a few reasons, which I'll get into once we actually start. But today we have one of those glimpses. Job is, is giving these hauntingly accurate desires of what God will do in Jesus. And today we have one of those about the resurrection. So that's what we're talking about. Job 14. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before I read Job 14, we were going to cover, I mean, we're supposed to cover Job 15. It's another wrong answer to the problem of suffering. And honestly, all the wrong answers kind of run around a central thread. And it's this idea of putting the emphasis on you. Like you've done something or you haven't done something or it, it's like if you, you need to do a thing differently to somehow affect the outcome of your suffering. And, and this wrong answer that we were supposed to cover is, is kind of the same thing. God is punishing you for doing something wrong. Yeah, wrong. It's not how God works. So we're going to cover Job 14, which talks about the resurrection because we need some like not depressing, awful stuff. We need to talk about some good stuff today. So there we go. That intro done. Let's get into Job chapter 14, which, by the way, starts out plenty depressing. Job is the one speaking. Man who is born of a woman is few of days and full of trouble. He comes out like a flower and withers. He flees like a shadow and continues not. And do you open your eyes on such a one and bring me into judgment with you? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? There is not one. Since his days are determined and the number of his months is with you and you have appointed his limits that he cannot pass, look away from him and leave him alone that he may enjoy like a hired hand his day. For there is hope for a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its shoots will not cease, though its root grow old in the earth, and its stump die in the soil. Yet at the scent of water it will bud, and put out branches like a young plant. But a man dies, and is laid low. Man breathes his last, and where is he? As waters fail from a lake, and a river wastes away and dries up, so a man lies down and rises not again. Till the heavens are no more, he will not awake or be roused out of his sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in Sheol, that you would conceal me until your wrath be past, that you would appoint, a, appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my service I would wait till my renewal should come. You would call, and I would answer you. You would long for the work of your hands, for then you would number my steps. You would not keep watch over my sin. My transgression would be sealed up in a bag, and you would cover over my iniquity. But the mountain falls and crumbles away, and the rock is removed from its place. The waters wear away the stones, the torrents wash away the soil of the earth. So you destroy the hope of man. You prevail forever against him, and he passes. You change his countenance and send him away. His sons come to honor, and he does not know it. They are brought low, and he perceives it not. He feels only the pain of his own body, and he mourns only for himself. Now, like I said, there's plenty of uh, sorrowful language still in Job chapter 14, but I have somehow called this a good uplifting chapter. And what I really want to focus on and the difference for us as Christians is 
that point after, I don't want to say after death, that, that point after the resurrection. I'll just, I'll just hop right to it. Because um, Job is sort of, oh, what, what natural metaphor are we looking for here? What, what, which one is man? Now, when he says man, I don't know if I've said this recently, so I'll say it again. Um, just the way that the Hebrew language works, call, they call a collection of people using the masculine. So like, hey, guys. I could be referring to like three or four men. I could also be referring to some, some males and some females. Um, I could even be referring to a group of girls. Like, guys, come on, stop it. So that's kind, kind of just an artifact of the language. Um, I'll go into that at some point. I'll probably have a reflection on that. But anyway, that's kind of the long and the short of it. So a, 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 a human, see, there's even the word man in there. Anyway, um, a, a personage. What, what's the natural metaphor that we want to associate with a person? Are we like water in the lake? Where it's just like, it, it kind of seems to be there, but then the lake is dried up. Are we like, we're a river town. Are we like a river where there were, there's, there's seashells way up on the tippity top of the hill? And the river sure enough ain't that high no more. That was crazy language. <laughs> Sorry. The river's way down at the bottom, and there's like river bits way up at the top. So, like, the water was up there, and now it's not. Is that the metaphor for man? That we, we got a lot of cool stuff, and then it just dries up, and there we go. Boom, we're gone. What, what else does Job? Oh, he talks about the mountains. Are we like the mountains? Majestic, high, lofty, glorious. That are then, you know, earthquaked and psh, leveled and they ain't so good now, is they? Lots of bad grammar today. That's okay. I got to get it all out now. What else? I'm obviously leaving the correct one for last. I guess that's it. All right, here we go. On to the correct one. Or is man like a tree? Is man like a tree? That, that sends out, oh, how does Psalm 1 go? Like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season and its root does not wither, in all that he does, he prospers. Yep, that's it. Psalm 1, boom, nailed it. That's the correct one, by the way. Um, man is like a tree, a tree. You can whoosh, cut it down, which we actually did to one of our trees. We just whoosh, lopped it right off. Not intentionally, anyway, that... That's neither here nor there. But it sent out a whole new tree, like the stumps over here. It sent out a whole new tree pretty close by. Right? And, and we didn't do nothing. We didn't water it. It just it just got the... God watered it, I guess. Is that kind of how man is? The, the old thing's dead and this new thing comes? Yes, by the way. That, that's kind of how... That's kind of how... The resurrection will work again any metaphor that we have short of just saying what the thing is is necessarily going to be limited um the resurrection is a recreation of your body a a resurrection imagine that um of you okay i am going to say this in in I'm going to say it because it's my third daughter's middle name, and I love this word. It's so beautiful. Anastasia. Anastasia. The resurrection is an anastasis, is the Greek. Um, literally standing up. A standing up. So if you imagine a dead person whoop, standing up, that would be terrifying unless God were the one doing it. God is standing us up from death, making us be alive people again in some kind of awesome, mysterious, cool way. That's what the resurrection is. So any metaphor that we have, like a tree, is just going to fall short in some area. But anyway, that's numerous digressions here. Job is giving us, he's been pointing out these desires that he has, which God 
knew that he was going to do. Let me just get that out of the way. But God will do in Christ. So a few times ago, we had this desire. Ah, Job's like, ah, you know what? I want I want to kind of argue my case before God. I want to have something of a trial. But it, like, how do I send God a subpoena? Hopefully I use that correctly. How do I get a message? How do I summon God to court? What I need is a mediator, an arbiter, somebody who's got kind of a hand on both. Somebody who's got a handle on God and a handle on man. And he can kind of unite us and bring us together and do good stuff for us. Huh. That's exactly who Jesus is and what Jesus does in that peculiar. Hmm. It's almost like there's an author of this whole thing running through from start to finish, kind of watching it, knowing what's... <laughs> Today, we have another... I, I'm like super excited, so I'm going to try to tone it down a little bit. Um, today, we have another one of those very, again, hauntingly particular desires of what God's going to do. It's just... It's insane. Like, Job, Job is saying, God, I wish that you would do this thing in a very specific way. And God's like, <laughs> hold on, Job. <laughs> hold on. We're not there yet. You're a very bright student. You need to let the rest of the class catch up. Okay. Um, where are we? If a man dies, verse 14. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my service, I would wait till my renewal would come. You would call. You would you would send out, no, I'm adding this. You would send out a trumpet blast. And I would answer you. You would long for the work of your hands. You would grab that body up from the dirt and you would shake off all the weird gooey bits and you would make it a good new body again. For then you would number my steps. You would not keep watch over my sin. My transgression would be sealed up in a bag and you would cover over my iniquity. It would almost be like all the sins are gone and there wouldn't be sinning again and everything would just be perfect and good and holy and right and pure and all those good godly adjectives. Holy moly, that's what the resurrection is. <laughs> Isn't that hauntingly particular? Now again, I, I happen to think Job was written about the time of Abraham. So we're talking like Genesis um, 16 through 25-ish, pretty early in the span of God's word, quite, quite early. I may, of course, be wrong, but I may also, of course, be right. So consider that. Anyway, that's not especially the point, but the point is Job is giving these predictions, not, not even really predictions. He's expressing these desires very early in, in kind of the history of all the stuff that God is going to precisely fulfill. That arbiter that you need, who's got a handle on God and a handle on man, who's like both God and man, don't worry, Job. I got somebody just like that who's going to be coming. He's my son. Oh, really? You you feel a bit a little bit like a tree, Job? Like you've been cut down? Uh, imagine if if I could give you a little bit of water. Oh, we're getting we're getting some little baptism imagery in here. Imagine a little bit of water would cause you to grow and to thrive in a new way. Ooh, ooh, that does happen a little bit in baptism. Romans 5 language, right? Uh, we're baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus. Ooh, it, it, you, you, you want me to call for you, Job? You, you think I'm going to long for, for you? I will. I absolutely will, Job. I want you to be with me forever. I'm going to stand you up. I'm going to raise you from the dead. And don't worry about those sins. I got those covered. That arbiter, he's going to take care of those. He'll make sure those are not a problem again. And when I stand you up, Job, when I resurrect your body, there won't be sin. There won't be suffering. There won't be illness or disease or viruses or any of that garbage. It'll all be gone. 
I'll be with you, Job. Hauntingly particular. The resurrection. All right. What else do I got? I mean, that's kind of the, the freight of the chapter. Uh, all right. A little bit on verse 13. Oh, that you would hide me in Sheol, that you would conceal me until your wrath be passed, that you would appoint me a set time and remember me. I know nothing about Sheol. There we go. Getting that right out of the way. Um, pretty much nobody knows nothing about Sheol. This word comes up pretty prompt. No, I shouldn't say that. S somewhat often in the book of Job. It comes up somewhat often in the Psalms. Both of them poetic works for what that's worth. It kind of comes up here and there. If you ask three different people about Sheol, three of them have never heard of it, and the other three will give you ten different answers, because math. Anyway, that's just to illustrate the confusion around this place or thing or realm called Sheol. Um, it, it is actually still a teaching in Judaism, and I don't quite know what they say about it. But it, it kind of seems to be a holding ground, a holding cell, um, a waiting room for the dead, kind of more or less. The way that Job pictures it, and, and especially the way that he talks about it here, so this, this Sheol, which is just the Hebrew word. It, so you know Hebrew, right? You can speak Hebrew. Um, that you would hide me in Sheol, that you would conceal me until your wrath be passed. So it's kind kind of like a bunker, right? We're gonna we're gonna hunker in the bunker, and and bad stuff is gonna happen, and then and then we're gonna come out of Sheol, and we'll have good stuff. It it sounds kind of like your body sitting in the ground until Judgment Day. And, and that's kind of where I would point someone. Again, nobody exactly knows what it is. There's only, no, I shouldn't say that. Um, there's been quite few people who have died and come back and they haven't given us a thorough treatise on the, uh, on Sheol. On, on a waiting room or bunker or holding cell or whatever image you want to use for it. But Job is, is again, kind of giving this desire, right? I'm going to die. I want you to put me somewhere. And when all the chaos and madness and junk is done, then stand me up, resurrect me, and, and we'll be good. So again, I, I don't know anything about Sheol. Uh, it's, it's kind of pictured. Oh, um, now in the Psalms, here we go. This is where I was going. In the Psalms, sometimes the righteous go to Sheol. Sometimes, ev sometimes only the righteous. Sometimes everybody goes to Sheol. And sometimes only the wicked go to Sheol. So again, like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Very, very weird. Um, when you die, you can tell me about it. Anyway, that's kind of the problem, right? But don't worry about it. Because no matter what it is, and no matter whether you go there or not, uh, the resurrection, that's, that's like... I don't want you to lose sight of the goal because there's a cool, shiny thing along the path. It's a cool thing, um, but the goal is, the finish line is the resurrection. That's where our good friend Job is wanting today. That's what he's like, ah, oh, God, do you, do you have some kind of thing? This is what I want you to do. And God's like, hold on, friend. 
hold on. I know. I know the desires that you have. I'm already, see, here we go. I'm linking devotions. I've already got the best plan laid out for you. And and I'm I'm holding your feet back from disaster and I'm pushing your feet forward in the way that you need to go. And at the end of that path, I'm going to stand you up. I'm going to resurrect your body. I'm going to take all your sin and snatch it away in a bag and throw that stupid thing into a fiery lake of fire. It's not quite what God does, but again, using Job's imagery. And then we'll get to live with God forever in a place with no sin or sickness or suffering or, 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 or any of that junk. That'll be really, really good. Oh, man. That's, that's where we keep our eyes focused. There we go. I don't want to say anything more, so we're done. Yeah. There, there's plenty more to say, and we'll continue our book. Look at the book of Job. But we need to pause, and we need to look specifically at the finish line and not glance around at the other garbage going on or even the other good things that are going on right now. We want to just look at the resurrection today, and that's all we're going to do. Done. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you for the water of life, for granting us new life in your family, and for the promise to grant us eternal, perfect life with you forever. Continue to strengthen our trust in you and help us to focus upon your gracious promise. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. I don't think I have anything clever to say. The resurrection. God's peace be with you. I'll see you next time.